All right. Um, thank you, everybody. Um, this today's lecture is on Unit 6.12, managing finance in the public sector. Right. Um, yes, it's managing finance. But then I want to assure you that this is not a ACCA or accountancy. So not need to be afraid at all. The aim is just to provide skills and techniques to enable you to analyze and control finance in the public sector and to be able to explain accountability for public sector finance. I guess most of you are doing this healthcare course so that you'll be able to work in the NHS, the GP surgeries, uh, whether it's natural secondary care or primary care, uh, whether in the care home or in a hospice, wherever you are, the essence of this is to be able to understand sources of income coming in and then to be able to understand basic financial statement like um, and the balance sheet and uh, understand key basic ratios that can be used to uh, analyze or appraise the financial standing of the organization. So it's nothing more than pure accountancy where you need to calculate so many things. No. This is not the purpose of this course. It's just to be able to give you the skills and techniques so that you'll be able to analyze and understand how uh, statements are and the, the meaning of what the accountants will produce for you. That's, that's all. Right. So uh, this unit has got three main learning outcomes. Learning outcome one is to understand accountability in the context of public sector finance. Learning outcome two is to be able to understand how to use financial information for decision making and control. And learning outcome three is to understand how to manage a public sector tender process. So you could see that there's nothing like pure accountancy in here. It's all for you to be able to understand and analyze and appreciate financial statement. That is all. Right. So if you look at the learning outcome one, understand accountability in the context of public sector finance. We have three uh, assessment criteria to meet. 1.1 is to analyze the different organizations in the public sector. 1.2 to assess the accountability of public sector managers in relation to finance. And 1.3 is to analyze the financial information reported for different public sector organizations. Now let's look at our uh, slides for today right so um as i said the unit is unit 6.12 with the title managing finance in the public sector and this is our first lecture right what is the aim of this unit it's simple to provide you with the skills and techniques to analyze and control finance in a public sector environment. And two, to explain accountability for public sector finance. And because our course is more or less in the, in the healthcare sector, we will concentrate more in the health sector so that it will be able to help us to answer the task and we'll zoom in on NHS for you to be able to understand the accountability requirement in the NHS. Right, so let's look at, so this is our, our main aim. Right, so the learning outcome one, as I explained, has got three assessment criteria that you need to meet to pass. Learning outcome one is simply to understand accountability in the context of public sector finance. And to be able to pass that, we need to achieve AC 1.1, which is analyze the different organizations in the public sector. 1.2, to assess the accountability of public sector managers in relation to finance. And 1.3, is to analyze the financial inform information reported for different public sector organizations. This means that you will have the information reported and you need to analyze and understand it. That's all. So objective of our lecture today is for us to be able to achieve assessment criteria AC 1.1 and AC 
Right. So um, we need to be able to analyze the different organization in the public sector. And for us to be able to do that, we should be able to have a clear understanding of what the public sector is and what the private sector is, so that we wouldn't use a private sector example in uh, doing our assignment. So when we say a public sector or a private sector, what do we mean? Are there any difference? Right. So when we say a public sector, every public sector is owned by the government. However, the private sector, on the other hand, is owned by individuals. What about control? Every public sector is directly under the control of the government. Again, the private sector is controlled by private owners. It's individual businesses, so they control it. Now, what are the sources of, sources of funding? Well, for all public sector organizations, the main source are from taxes, taxation. For us, in the case of the private sector, we have people getting loans and savings, borrowing from different areas, and using them to start their business. So that is the source. Again, to distinguish the private sector from the public sector, the, private, the, the public sector is accountable to the public. Why? Because the funds were generated from the public, being taxes. And because of that, they are required to publish the accounts. In terms of accountability for the private ownership or the private sector, the owner is accountable to himself and is not required to uh, provide uh, the account into the public domain. Right, so these are the clear distinctions between the public sector and the private sector that I want you to understand before we go ahead. Right, let's look at the next slide. Now we try to look at few examples of public sector and that of the private sector to make it very clear. Some of the prominent private sector companies that we have in the UK, I mean, I'm trying to use the UK, the Virgin Atlantic is one of the big ones. Famous Water is another big one. Dizon Carrefour is another one. Matalan is a very big shop. B&M is another one. These are all big, big private sector companies that we have here in the UK. Of course, if you are outside the UK, you can still use examples of private sector companies in your country of residence. Now, if you look at the private se public sector, good example are all government agencies. The National Health Service is the NHS, NHS Trust. It's a good example. We have the police authorities or the local councils. And then we have the Kwangos or the Kwaisa Autonomous Non-Governmental Organizations, which are, when we say Kwaisa, it means they are partly owned by the government and the partly private. So that's why it is Kwaisa. They are more or less autonomous. And then we have some international examples like the World Bank. World Bank. World Bank is not private. It's an example of a public sector international public sector organization. So at least we've got clear distinction between a public sector and a private sector. Right, and for our assignment, we would like to dwell on the public sector. Right, the next slide. Let's look at what the details of a private sector organization. By definition, every private sector organization is part of the country's economic system that is run by individuals and companies rather than the government. And most private sector organizations are run with the intention of making profit. So profit is the key thing that we need to look at here when we talk about the private sector. They are mainly established 
by owners so as to make profit. An example of what have already been given already, uh, Virgin Atlantic, Thames, Water, Dizon, Kaho, Nematala, and the BNM. Right. Next slide, let's look at the public sector. In general terms, the public sector consists of governments and all publicly controlled or publicly funded agencies, enterprises, and other entities that deliver public programs, goods, or services. So let's be very careful here. Programs, public programs, including goods and services. So it's not services alone, it's not goods alone. Right. So public sector organizations are formed in three different forms. We have departmental undertakings, public corporations, statutory corporations, and government companies, which are all over the world. So if you look at the diagram at the right hand side below it, we have the public sector comprising of the government, general government, the central government, the state government, and local government, all the institutions under them are more or less the public sector. And then we also have public corporations, uh, corporations, organizations that are run by the government. Right. So uh, previously, the railway system was a public sector uh, organization in the UK, but it has now been privatized. So it's no longer uh, a public corporation. It's now a private corporation. Right. Let's move on to the next slide. Let's try and analyze the public sector organizations. One, we have departmental undertakings. The public sector are the oldest form of public sector enterprises. We've got different departments running them, and the department undertaking is considered as one of the departments of the government. It has no separate existence than the government. So no department was formed basically by the government, and they exist because of the government. It functions under the overall control of one ministry or department of government. Right. So if we, if if you take uh, uh, the uh, Department of Health, you could see that the NHS is under it, and a lot of institutions are also under them. The department base, for example, railways. Post, telegraph, broadcasting, telephone services are all part of the departmental undertakings. I think in the UK, the railway is no longer, the railways have not been privatized. But the post, to some extent, BBC, to some extent, are all the departmental undertakings that provide services for the government. Features of departmental undertakings. The main features of departmental undertakings are they operate under the overall control of one of the ministries of central or state government. This is what we need to note. They are a part of a government only, and there is no separate entity. The revenue of departmental undertaking is deposited in the treasury of the government. This is also very, very important. Our public sector. Any revenue generated are deposited to the government funds or treasury. They are, financed, they are financed from the annual budget of the government. So all those departmentals, the department, that, government department that we have annually, budgets are set from them. So the exchequer will allocate budget to run such departmentals, such departments. Okay. All right, let's go on. This is a repetition. Let's go on. Let's look at merits of departmental undertakings. What are the merits? It is very easy to form a departmental undertaking as no registration is compulsory. There is a direct parliamentary control. The performance of departmental undertaking can be discussed in parliament. So there is public accountability. The revenue of departmental undertakings is deposited in the treasury of the government. So these undertakings 
help to increase government revenue. These are the merits. What about public corporations or statutory corporation? It's a body, it's a, it's, a, it's a corporate body formed by a special act of parliament or by the central or the state legislature. And it is fully financed by the government. Its powers, objects, and limitations are also decided by the act of the legislature. For example, the NHS and Bank of England. Right. What are the features of public corporations? The main features of public corporations are they are created by an act of parliament or central or the state legislature. The powers, objects, and limitations of a public corporation are defined by the act only. They are under total control of the state or the central government. Right? And uh, a public corporation is a separate legal entity. It gets incorporated automatically when the act is passed in parliament. Good. Let's look at the next slide. What are merits of a public corporation? Go, well, we have to analyze public sector organizations. A public corporation is able to manage its affairs with independence and flexibility. Again, a public corporation is relatively free from red tape. And there is less firework and less formality to be completed before taking decision. The activities of the public corporation are discussed in Parliament. This ensures protection of public interest. So if you look at the uh, BBC, whatever goes on that can be discussed in Parliament because it's for the government. Right. What about government companies? The company in which at least 51% of the paid up share capital is held by the central or state government or partly by the central or state government is a government company because it owns shares, more shares. The government companies are governed and ruled by the provision of the Companies Act. So in England, it will be the Company Act of England. Right. What are the main features of government company? One, registration. The government company gets incorporated under the Company Act 1956. All the provisions of Companies Act are applicable to the government company. Ownership. The government company is wholly or partly owned by the government. The share capital of these companies is owned by the government, in the case of India, in the name of the president. What about management? The government is managed by the board of directors who are nominated by the government and other shareholders. The government has the authority to appoint a majority of the directors. Merit of government company. The government company is relatively free from government and political interference. The government company is managed, financed, and audited just as all our private sector companies. It can therefore secure greater flexibility, freedom of operation, and quickness of action in running the enterprise. Government companies can avail and accommodate managerial skills, technical know-how, or expertise of the private enterprise of the private enterprise by conveniently collaborating with it. So it can still collaborate, even though it's a government company, it can collaborate with the private. Now, since we are dealing with health and social care, we'll zoom in with all our examples into the NHS. So we'd like to look at a brief history of the National Health Service in the UK. In fact, the NHS started in 1948 after a centuries discussion on the provision of health services to meet a long, to meet a long recognized need. There was so much debate because health wasn't good in the UK and things were quite difficult. So after a long debate in 1948, the NHS started. And before the National Health Service was created in 48, patients were generally required to pay for their health care. So you could see that things have changed prior to 1948. Free treatment was sometimes available from teaching hospitals and charity hospitals, such as the Royal Free so this is the brief history of the NHS, started in 1948 
Prior to that, patients were required to pay for the health services. So that is a brief history of the NHS. All right. Now let's look at the sources of funding. Because we have to be able to understand the sources of funding, understand financial statement, the need for us to be accountable to the taxpayer, and we should be able to analyze the financial statement wherever we are working in the, in, the, in, the, in the health sector. So that's why we are using the NHS as an example. So if you take the NHS, the main source of funding are from taxes, national insurance, user fees, for example, the health surcharge, that people who are non-EUs and uh, uh, yeah, people who are living outside the EU are paying currently. And we also have car park charges. These are all sources of funds that goes into the NHS, but taxes are the main sources of what? Funding for the national health services in the UK. All right. Let's look at accountability in the NHS. Why the need for accountability? Well, since all the funding, as we have explained, is coming from taxes and, and, and national insurance number, key stakeholders who are electorate, uh, the electorate and the service users need to understand what the money has been used for. So there is a need for accountability to all stakeholders, including patients like us and the entire population, because we pay taxes. The taxes are used to run the NHS, so there's the need for them to be accountable to us. Again, there's a need to understand how the taxpayer money is used. How do we achieve this one? Accountability can be achieved through auditing. The need is the need to audit the National Health Service, the NHS Foundation Trust, for them, for us to find out if the money has been used for the purpose at which it was used, it should be used. So accountability can be achieved through auditing. Apart from that, there is mandatory financial reporting system that they have to meet. Again, there are laws, legislation, governing the use of the money, so we will ensure that the right legislation are used. Again, policies and procedures are in place to make them accountable. We have to make sure that such policies and procedures are followed. And finally, to be able to find out that patients in the general population are having value for the money in terms of the services that they receive. At the National Health Service. Let's go to the next slide. Information that needs to be reported by law on NHS. So, as NHS managers or uh, people who are in the health and social care sector, we need to understand that. We are required by law to provide information, number one, on all the sources of income that we receive. We have a reporting requirement for financial and non-financial performance of the health sector. And all such information should be published by law. We need to publish it. So if you go online, you can see uh, the, 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 the the, the balance sheet of uh, North Manchester NHS Trust, uh, all, all the hospitals, you can find their uh, financial statement. This is, uh, they are all in the public public domain because it's public funding they are using. Right, so they are required to do that. Information that need to be reported by law, and then we need to provide external report. And this external report are provided by 
the Care Quality Commission, CQC. They are supposed to uh, stand as the watchdog to audit and find out about the standard of operation, how the care health care service delivery is done. So the Care Quality Commission will go into that and write an external report, which is required by law. We have also got the Audit Commission, and then they should also be able to report to Parliament about the running of the NHS. Right, so there is information requirement by law to be reported by all public sector organizations. And in this case, I've given you typical examples which apply to other public sector organizations, but this one I'm quite specific to the National Health Service NHS. Right, the next slide. For what we have run through now, you could see that we've been able to look at 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1.1 so, is asking us to analyze different organizations in the public sector. Analyze different organizations in the public sector. How do we go about answering these tax? Now, before we go on, I just want you to understand that as level six, stroke seven health care management courses, you need to provide us with a structured report with an introduction, a body of the essay, and a conclusion. And after having done all that, you need to provide a short abstract on top. And then use the Harvard referencing style and make sure you provide all the sources in test. And then when you finish, List all the sources in the bibliography at the bottom of your work and provide a table of content, right? So you need to write a structured report, a structured report. So let's look at tax 1.1. Simply analyze the different organizations in the public sector. Analyze the different organizations in the public sector. I gave you some examples apart from the uh, National Health Service. That is obvious to us. We have the police service. It's a public sector organization. We have the councils. They are all public sector organizations. So at least you can pick two or three, not leaving out NHS and then analyze the three organizations, their core themes of being formed, how they are run, the sources of income that we receive, and how they are accountable. So if you choose an organization, try and come out with a small description or explanation on the history, how it was formed, how it is organized, how it is run, and then see their source of income and how they are operated. So you can choose the NHS, which have given you detailed explanation. You can choose the councils or the police or the army. They are all public sector organizations. Right, so you always need to refer to the slide and see how the slide is explaining and then follow it. Right, so you come out with a brief introduction and then the learning and the assessment criteria 1.1, 1.2, 1.3 will be subheadings. So every subheading, uh, introduce it a bit, define key concepts what is a public organization? How different is it from a private sector organization? And then go on to describe. 1.2 looks at 
how we'll be able to assess the accountability of public sector managers in relation to finance. 1.2, assess the accountability of public sector managers in relation to finance. Now, all public sector organizations are financed by the public or from taxes. So the main reason why public sector organizations are accountable is the fact that they are being financed by the public through taxes. So that is the essence of accountability. And you need to mention specific organizations. Right. So the question is assess accountability of public sector managers in relation to finance. So if you choose the NHS, why is managers in the NHS accountable? They are accountable because the money that they are using comes from taxes. Therefore, they should be accountable to the stakeholders, being the general population and uh, in the patients as well. All stakeholders involved, they should be able to account for what the money, or the source, the sources of money that they receive. And then they should be able to tell us how those monies were used. And then their reporting procedure, how they are able to report the use of the money to the general public. Right. 1.3 is analyze financial information reported for different public sector organizations. Say different. So here you can choose the NHS, the police, the councils, the military, and then find out information requirements by law. What are they supposed to provide to the public by law? If you take the NHS, for instance, by law, because they are being financed through taxation, they are supposed to provide how the monies were used. And this is done through repression of financial statements, income and expenditure, and then their balance sheet requiring all their assets and liabilities, everything comes in there. And this, by law, must be published to the general public. So this will be the, the public domain for us to know how the money was used for. Right, so analyze financial information reported for different public sector organizations. If you go online, there are so many financial reporting systems of a lot of public sector organizations that you can pick on and then analyze. Right, so you could see that we've been able to achieve within a short span of time, let it outcome 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3. Let's have a recap of what we did today for the sake of those who couldn't catch up initially. So the whole ta task was to provide, the unit is to provide skills and techniques to analyze and control finance in the public sector and to explain accountability for public sector. And then we'll, we said that for the whole unit, the, the whole learning outcome one, we have three assessment criteria to achieve. And then this lecture is focusing on assessment criteria 1.1 and 1.2. And then we were able to explain the distinction between public sector and the private sector. And then we gave examples of public sector companies, organizations, and the private sector ones. And as I said, you can always, if you are outside the UK, you can use example in your whole country to explain. And then we have what a private sector organization is, should be able to differentiate it between the public sector and give examples. So the public sector organizations are many, in their different forms, they could be departmental, public corporation, they, they could be a government company, that has been explained. And then in terms of analyzing them, what does the departmental organizations do? What are their features? What are the merits, if they have? What about public corporations? What are they? Right. What are the main features of 
public corporations, what are the merits of public corporations? Then we have government companies, which are all companies having at least 54% of paid up shared capital. Right. What are the features of government companies? And the merits of government companies. And then we use NHS as a case study. We we'll talk briefly about the NHS, which started in 1948 up to now. So you can go online and look at the NHS of 1948 and the new NHS in 2018. And then look at the main sources of funding for the NHS, which are taxes, national insurance, user fee, and car park charges. So if you choose any organization apart from the NHS, try and tell us the main source of what funding as well. Why do we need to be accountable? And then information that we are required by law to report as a public sector organization. So we've been able to achieve learning outcome. One, and an assessment criteria, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. So I will, I, will, I will encourage you to start working on 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3 straight away. And if you don't understand anything there, just drop in my email, and then I'll get back to you, and then we'll take it from there. All right. I'm going to uh, put this slide on Moodle. So you can always assess it. And I'm also going to put uh, financial information on the National Health Service, the uh, balance sheet, the income expenditure accounts, which are already in the public domain to support you do your assignment. I'll put all of them in the folder and module so that you can go in there. And then I'm going to design a sample structure of the assignment and then put it on module so that it will be able to guide you to finish your assignment on time, right? Uh, thank you very much for your time, and uh, I hope you'll be able to join me next time. Those who are not able to join me, I hope uh, you'll be able to read online and then pass on any question through an email to me. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye for now. Bye.